Hello students, I hope you all are doing well. This is your math teacher Shweta Bajaj. Students, please subscribe my channel if not subscribed yet. And don't forget to mark yourself as present by writing your name, class and section in the comment box. Now students, in our today's video, we will do the revision of chapter number 4 in teachers. So let's start. So students, what is an integer? It is a set of whole numbers which include 0 and their opposites. For example, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. An integer and its opposite are at the same distance from 0 on a number line. And the opposite of minus 4 is 4 and both are 4 spaces away from 0. Hopefully it is clear to you. So students basically there are three types of integers and the first is positive integers. All the natural numbers are positive integers. Second is negative integers. All the numbers having minus sign with them are known as negative integers. For example, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. And the third is 0. Where 0 is neither positive or nor negative. Or we can say 0 is a neutral integer. Hopefully it is clear to you. Students, next is the use of integers in the real world. And in our day-to-day -day life, we come across many situations where we need to use negative numbers and positive numbers. For example, students, when there is a deposit of money or when there is a gain or increase or when the number lies to the right on a number line, then we will represented by a positive integer and when students there is below there is a loss there is a number line on the left on a number line then we will represent it by a negative sign some of the examples are shown here hopefully it is clear to you Now, next is integers on the number line. And students, when we represent the integers on the number line, we consider 0 as a midpoint. All the positive integers lie towards the right and all the negative integers lie towards the left. Also, we set off equal distances to the left and to the right of 0 to denote the negative and positive integers. For example, here minus 4 and 4 are at equal distances from 0 but they are in opposite directions. Hopefully, it is also clear to you. Now students, next is absolute value and it says that the absolute value of an integer is its distance from 0 on a number line. The symbol for absolute value is two vertical bars and inside these two vertical bars we will write the integer. For example, absolute value of minus 3 is equals to 3. Absolute value of 3 is equals to 3. And students please note here that absolute values are never negative. Opposite integers have the same absolute value and absolute value of 0 is equals to 0. Hopefully it is clear to you. Now the students next is the rules of integers and firstly is the case of addition. Now students when in the case of addition both the integers are having the same sign then we simply add them and take the common sign and when the signs are different then we simply subtract them and take the sign of the largest absolute value. 
Now students, in the case of subtraction, we simply change to add the opposite. And students, in the case of multiplication or division, when two integers are given to us and when both the integers are having the same sign, the answer comes out to be positive. When both the integers are having the different sign, the answer comes out to be negative. Hopefully, it is clear to you. Next is properties of the operations on integers and mainly there are six types of properties and they are first is closure property, second is commutative property, third is associative property, fourth is distributive property, fifth is identity property and the sixth is inverse property. Now students let us discuss them in brief. And the first property is closure property. It says that on adding two integers, we will always get an integer. On subtracting two integers, we will always get an integer. On multiplying two integers, we will always get an integer. And on dividing two integers, we will always not get an integer. Sometimes our answer will comes out to be an integer. Sometimes our answer comes out to be in decimals or in fractions. So that means integers are closed under addition, subtraction and multiplication only. Now, the next property is commutative property. And it says that changing the order while doing addition does not affect the sum. Changing the order while multiplying will not affect the product. And on changing the order while subtraction, the answer will not comes out to be same. And in division also, on changing the order while dividing, the answer will not comes out to be same. So, integers are commutative under addition and multiplication only. Hopefully, it is clear to you. Now, the next property is associative property and it says that change in the group of the integers does not affect the sum or the product. But, in the case of subtraction, it doesn't hold. If we will change the group, the answer will comes out to be different. And in case of division also, if we will change the group, the answer will comes out to be different. So this property also holds in the case of addition and multiplication only. Now, the next property is distributive property. And it says that when two numbers have been added or subtracted and then multiplied by a factor, the result will be the same when each number is multiplied by the factor and the products are then added or subtracted. Hopefully, this is also clear to you. Now, the next property is identity property and in the case of addition, it says that on adding 0 to any integer, we will get our answer as an integer. And in the case of multiplication, on multiplying any integer with 1, we will get our answer as integer itself. Hopefully, it is also clear to you. And that is why, one more thing students, that is why 0 is called the additive identity and 1 is called the multiplicative identity. Hopefully, it is clear to you. Now, the next property is inverse property. And in case of addition, it says that the sum of any number and its additive inverse is 0. And the additive inverse of any number A is minus a. And in case of multiplication, it says that the product of any number and its multiplicative inverse or reciprocal is 1. That is A multiplied by 1 by A is equals to 1. So the multiplicative inverse of any number A is 1 by A. Hopefully it is also clear to you.
Now students, let us do some questions and firstly I have taken simplify and the question says 97 plus 716 minus 412 minus minus 768. Now students, firstly we will rewrite it as 97 as it is plus as it is 716 as it is minus as it is 412 as it is and this minus minus will become plus 768. Now students in the next step I have combined the positive integers in a bracket and in the next step I have solved this bracket that means on solving this bracket I will get 1580. 1 and this minus 412 as it is. Now 1581 minus 412 will gives us 1169 as in answer. Hopefully it is clear to you. Now students in question number 2 I have taken find the integer using the number line which is and the first part is 4 more than minus 2 that means we can write it as minus 2 plus 4, right? So, on the number line, you know that we will take 0 as a midpoint and we will take negative integers on the left side of 0 and positive integers on the right side of 0. Now, since it is written minus 2 plus 4, so we will start from 0 and we will reach minus 2, okay? And mark it as A. Now, from minus 2, we will move towards right, 4 steps right. Why? Because it is written plus 4. So, 4 steps right means 1, 2, 3, 4. Where we, where we will stop? We will stop at 2. So, name it as B. So, this means minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 2. Hopefully, it is clear to you. Now students, in the second part, I have taken 3 less than 0. That means 0 minus 3. So we will start from 0. And since we have to subtract 3, that means we will go 3 steps to the left of 0. That means 1, 2, 3. So where we stopped? We stopped at minus 3. So, this means 0 minus 3 will gives us minus 3 as in answer. Hopefully, this is also clear to you. Students, next I have taken is question number 3 and question number 3 says that on a certain day at a certain time in Alaska, the temperature was minus 31 degree Celsius. On the same day, the temperature in Toronto was 21 degree Celsius. Find out the difference between these two temperatures. Now students, in a solution, firstly we will write down temperature in Alaska is equal to minus 31 degree Celsius. Temperature in Toronto is equal to 21 degree Celsius. Celsius. Now students here since we have to find out the difference between them. So what we will do? We will take the bigger number at the first place and smaller number at the second place. So that means we will write it like this 21 degree Celsius minus minus 31 degree Celsius. Now students in the next step this minus minus will become plus. Now what we will do? We will add 21 degree Celsius and 31 degree Celsius. And on adding them, what we will get? We will get 52 degree Celsius as our answer. Hopefully, it is clear to you. Now students, next I have taken is question number 4 and the question says that Mr. Mehta deposited Rs. 45,890 in his zero balance account on Tuesday and withdrew Rs. 41,099 on Wednesday and deposited Rs. 4,000 on Friday. Find the total balance in his account. So students, firstly we will write down the statements like this. Money deposited on Tuesday, Rs. 
rupees forty five thousand eight ninety. Money withdrew on Wednesday is equals to rupees forty one thousand ninety nine. Since students, this is the amount withdrawn, so we can represent it by minus sign. That means minus rupees forty one thousand ninety nine. Money deposited on Friday is equals to rupees four thousand. Therefore. We have to find out the total balance in his account. Total balance in his account will be given by this forty-five thousand eight hundred and ninety plus inside the bracket minus forty-one thousand ninety-nine plus four thousand. Now, students, in the next step, we can rewrite it as forty-five thousand eight hundred and ninety. This plus minus will become minus forty-one thousand ninety-nine plus four thousand. Now, in the next step, I have grouped two integers. That is forty-five thousand eight hundred and ninety minus forty-one thousand ninety-nine. Now, in the next step. What I have done, I have solved this bracket, and on solving this bracket, I have got four thousand seven hundred ninety-one plus four thousand as it is. And in the last step, I will add both of them, and on adding them, I have got eight thousand seven hundred ninety-one as an answer. Hopefully, this is also clear to you. So, students, with this, our chapter number four in teachers is over. Now, pause your video. and note down your home task and in your home task i have given some questions for practice for any doubts and queries you can leave your message in the comment section i hope you like the video thank you